Hey everyone, I'm Tech Steve, and if you've been thinking about buying a new Samsung budget television set, in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys the differences between two models. Over here, I have the 43 inch AU8000, and over here, we have the 43 inch Q60A. Now in this video, we're gonna see which one is brighter, which one has a better contrast ratio, which one has best audio, and then we'll check out some gaming as well as the design. So if you've been thinking about buying a new budget television set, Sit back and relax, and let's get started. Before we get into the details of this video, I just wanna go over a few things for you guys. First of all, these are both United States models, and unfortunately, they don't sell the AU7000 or 9000 in the United States. I can't actually buy them to compare, even if I wanted to. The second thing is that these are 60 hertz panels, which performs excellent on your Xbox Series X or your PlayStation because the majority of the games are gonna still run at 60 hertz. Another thing about these TV sets, they do not support VRR for gaming. However, they do support low latency mode and there's a lot of things that we're gonna go over in this video. So uh, let's start off with the design of the TV sets. Now here we have the back panel. You can see both of these TV sets look completely identical down to the inputs. As far as inputs, you're gonna find two USBs, a LAN connection for hooking direct to a router, there's two HDMIs here, and there's a connection for connecting to an antenna. You also find there's additional third HDMI here, a fiber optic output, but they did remove all the component and composite inputs, nor does it have headphone outputs. In today's video, I have the Samsung MU6290. Well, these cables right here is gonna plug in for component input. You're gonna match up the colors. You're gonna take blue and plug it right here and yellow and put it on the bottom. Another thing I wanna point out is that both TV sets have eARC, which is good for 7.1 audio pass-through. And with the 200 millimeter by 200 millimeter pole pattern, you can mount these to just about any VESA mount. And for $130, you can buy this Samsung Slim Fit mount that allows the TV set to mount flusher to the wall. Now that looks good on the wall. Now these TV sets are super thin, so don't expect robust audio. And you can see there's a couple slots right here to allow the bass and the audio to come right through the bottom. Now when I tell you TV sets are thin, here's a deck of cards to give you an idea. Look at that, that's thin. One thing you like about this design is that both TV sets has a slim thin bezel that makes it look more like a picture frame when hanging on the wall. But one thing you'll notice is that the Q60A has more of a grayish look over the black look like the AU8000. Another way to tell them apart is that the Q60A has more of a slanted angle feet where the AU8000 are pretty much flat. Here's the remote controls that come with both TV sets. The biggest thing you're gonna notice is that this has the multi-view and I'll show you guys that in later on in this video. And if you flip them over, the Q-Series also has a solar panel, so you don't really have to charge all the time as long as you keep it near natural light. But overall, both TV sets are very functional. And if you look at the bottom here, you have a USB to charge the Q60A remote control. So at first glance, you can see both television sets appear to look almost identical, but that's where it stops. Now the biggest difference is that the QLED series has dual backlights. And what that does for you is that there's one backlight for cool colors and one for warm. And what it's gonna do overall is give you a much brighter and more detailed picture than the AU8000 that has one backlight. When it comes to the AU8000, it has what they call a crystal UHD processor. And it's a good processor, but if you look into the 4K lineup, it's kind of like the bare bone. So whenever you get a lot of 4K content, it's gonna work a little bit harder to give you the same results. Now on the other hand, the Q60A has a quantum 4K light processor, which is much faster. It's kind of like in the computer world. The more processors you have, the faster cores you have, the better it's gonna reproduce pictures, sound, or anything that you're playing. I also wanna tell you guys that both of these TV sets are edge-lit BA panels, meaning the backlights around the frame of the TV set and they're not all the way across. So you're not gonna be able to get full ray dimming or anything like that. However, Samsung has a processor called UHD dimming that is proprietary, but it's supposed to give you a better result whenever you get to black levels. Now I'm gonna give you guys a quick spoiler alert. If I had a choice between the two TV sets, I would definitely get a Q series. It's just much brighter and more details. Now, that's not to say it's for everyone. If you are on a budget and you can't swing the extra couple hundred dollars, the AU8000 is perfect. But if you do have the money, 
go with the Q60A, Q70A, Q88, just anything that's QLED. Now, I'm gonna show you guys some of the comparisons side by side so you can see the differences for yourself. I'm gonna tell you guys I really like the AU8000, but when it comes to a QLED, it just cannot compare. And everything I'm about to show you is gonna prove that. First of all, you can see right now that the color tone is a lot better on the Q60A, as far as the blues. And to give you guys a fair comparison through all these tests, I'm gonna leave it in the same settings. So what we have is dynamic. So if you go down here to expert picture settings, you can see that the brightness is at 50, contrast is at 50, sharpness at 12 on both models, and everything in here is exactly the same. Now I know you can go into some of the menus and adjust some other things, but I basically wanna keep these TV sets on the same playing field. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into some uh, video test. So we're gonna use this Spear and Muscle 4K disc to show you guys some of the different uh, colors and contrasts and things like that. So here's one of the first contrast tasks, and I will tell you in dynamic mode, it's just gonna blow out all the black levels in most cases. But you can see right here in the center of this TV set, it's just like a beacon of light, and it's just more gradually going over to the other colors where the AU8000 is a little bit washed out around the edges. Another thing you can tell difference on a QLED is that Everything is more like pure white, where you look at the AU8000, it's more like a warmer look. And again, that dual LED is really gonna bring out the brightness in your color capabilities. But let's just go ahead and do some more tests. And again, I like both TV sets. So another color test I wanna show you guys, if you look up in the skies right here, you can see on the QLED, it is blue. Or if you look at it on AU8000, it looks more like a really light green. Now here's another look. And you can see that the contrast of the Q series is bringing in more black levels in the leaves here. But again, I want you guys to tell me what you think and what you see, but keep in mind, this is a recording. So I'm kind of giving you guys an idea of what I'm seeing here live. And here's one more example for you guys showing going from white into the black levels. You can see right here, it's a pretty fine line over here. And I will tell you that the AU8000 is doing a good job showing different patterns there, but again, the outside over here doesn't look completely white. However, I will tell you that these TV sets do have the same amount of colors as you can see right here. If you look at that top line, it goes from black all the way to the brightest in these different color tones. So don't worry, the AU8000, great colors, just not as bright if you're looking at a Q series television set. So here's some example of real life people. And one thing you can see is that the snow on the Q60A is white. And if you look at skin tones, just more natural. The dog looks like it has different layers of colors. Like you can see it's white around his mouth and it's a little yellow on the belly. And here's another example for you guys. I showed this on another video. And the biggest things you can tell is that the Q series have more balanced colors in my opinion. Also her uh, sweater there looks a lot more orange for me. And here's one more with a boxer. But you tell me what you think in the comments below and uh, we'll take it from there. Now, after I made that statement about which TV set I would buy, you guys will probably think I'm biased, but just to be honest with you guys, unless it says promotional video, every TV that you see on my video, on my channel, I purchase on my own. It's 100% me. So when you guys ask me if I have all these different models to compare, I don't. I buy a certain amount of TVs at a time. 
I review them, I go over them for a few months, I sell them off, and then I go into new TV sets. And hopefully in the future, we'll be able to bring in some OLED so I can show you guys those as well. Now, I will tell you that besides the colors, the Q-Series does have a lot more features, and that's what we're gonna do now, get into the menu system so you guys can see the differences. Now, I will tell you that on a TU-8000, they did remove a feature called ambient mode on the AU-8000, but uh, let's get into it. Now let's talk about the menu system and some of the differences between both television sets. So at first glance, both of these TV sets appear to look exactly the same. But if you scroll over, you can see that the Q60A has ambient mode. So here's an example of what ambient mode looks like. So it lowers the brightness on the TV set and it makes your TV set look more like a picture frame. So you can download all these different themes, whereas art, uh, also backgrounds, but what it'll do is whenever you're not using the TV set, it'll go into this kind of sleeping mode and displays this, which is pretty cool if you want it to look more like a picture frame if you buy that Samsung mount. And if you scroll over again, the Q68 also has multi-view. And with multi-view, you can do these sports presets where you can watch two games side by side or any kind of broadcast as long as you have an application on your phone and then you have one on your TV set and there's another feature called Home Workout where you can use your camera by hooking up a USB camera to the TV set or using your mobile camera and then you can pull up a YouTube videos and it will watch you as you're doing your exercise. And this is what it looks like with the multi view turned on. Over here we have the PlayStation 5 and over here is waiting for content. So I have this Samsung phone. Let me go and hit the share feature which is called Smart View. I then can press Samsung Q68, and there it is. So anything I play on the phone, will play side by side on a television set. And if you press on one of the items, you get these controls here. So you can see there's play, you can rotate the screen, and you can do different pictures and pictures. So that's a snapshot of what MultiView does. And of course you have apps on both TV sets, but if you continue to move over on the Q68, you can see that there's a smart things application right here. And what that's used for is if you have any Samsung device that's connected to the ecosystem, you can control some of the basic functionalities from this television set. And if you go up here to the top, you can add a device. And you can see it's scanning, looking for other devices that can be connected to the smart things guide. So this is coming in handy for people who want to use the voice commands or want to hook more items in their house up to the television set to make their home a little bit smarter. So besides the gaming mode being turned on, you can see the Q60A has this little pop up here. And over here, you can go directly to your game settings. You can position so you can adjust the screen to where you want it and you have different aspect ratios. So if you have it hooked up to a computer and you want to do more of an anamorphic screen or something like that, this is going to allow you to do that. Now, if you go over here and you see VRR off, this TV set does not have VRR. So that makes me assume that the television set has the same menu as higher end models, but I think they should remove that and took that little extra time so people wouldn't get confused and think this TV set had a feature that it really doesn't. And then of course it shows your frames per second as well as your, your input lag right there. And real quick, I just want to show you guys the sound settings. And just in case you wonder, both TV sets do support Dolby Atmos outputs. If you're using a HDMI 2.1 cable hooked up to a compatible device, like a 4k Blu-ray player, or if you have Netflix or something like that. But if you go into the expert mode, you can see right here, you have your balance, you have an EQ, and this is where you can control the eARC, which I showed you guys earlier. Another thing that both TV sets have is they both have voice commands. So you can go in here and add Google, Alexa, or you can use the Bixby if you in a supported area. And under external device manager, this is where you can go in and pretty much adjust every input of the television set. Now here's the thing, you can set this up where the picture profiles are just for one item at a time, one input, one app. However, if you want everything to match up, you can go in here and trigger it to have the same look on every single input. Another thing is both TV sets have Apple AirPlay, but they do not support Apple HomeKit. And here's uh, some smart features. So that's the menu system, guys. Now let's get into some gamings, but again, I want to show you guys the colors. You can just see the Q60A has better colors overall. You can see that the clouds are whiter, and again, you can see this blue right here versus that looks more like a 
more like a light blue or a teal to me uh, just here live. But again, this is a recording. Tell me what you think in the comments below. A lot of people don't remember, but it used to be a feature called picture in picture back in the analog world. And it allowed you to take two signals and split it. And people wonder why did they get rid of it? Well, first of all, we started moving to digital that required a receiver box or something like that. So eventually they pulled that feature out. But with the multi view, it's kind of like a form of bringing it back. And it's gonna allow you to have more of that picture in picture feature. Since a lot of us using our smartphones, you could have Twitter, texty videos on that second screen. Now, I do read all you guys' comments, but someone asked me a question about screen mirroring. First of all, you can do screen mirroring on iPhones with a feature called AirPlay. You just drop down the screen, hit AirPlay, and then you wanna punch in a couple of numbers on the screen, then you're good to go. Now, when it comes to other devices like the Samsung here, you can slide down the screen twice, slide over, and you can go to a feature called Smart View, and that'll allow you to mirror the screen. Now here's the thing, they asked me about the Google Pixel. Well, here's a Google Pixel here, and I looked around, I played with it, I can't get it to do screen mirroring, and I think it's because Google really want to push the Chromecast units to be able to you know, go over to the screen mirroring, but if you guys know a way to do that, maybe answer that in the comments below, that'd be great. And now I'm gonna show you guys some basic gaming using a PS5, let's go. Now, I know you guys are probably wondering how dark does these TV sets get when you game in HDR. But what I did is I just left the HDR turned off because since I'm using one PlayStation 5 on two TV sets, you literally have to set these up as individual adjustments. For example, if I go in here and hit adjustment, you can see I get that pop up is because the PlayStation is seeing that it's not hooked up to one device. So everything I'm going to show you today is going to be SDR mode. But again, it gives you an idea of how TV sets perform without the HDR. First game I'll show you guys is Dirt 5 because I just don't have the time to uh, play games. I got too much going on. To me, the gaming experience was pretty good. As you can see, everything went smooth. You guys saw what I saw, so uh, not bad for 60 hertz. Now what we're gonna do is hook up a laptop to the television set so we can see what it looks like whenever you're doing any type of graphic work or anything that uh, the computer has to offer. Here's an example of both TV sets hooked up to a computer. And again, you can see that the Q60A has much better colors. And that's thanks to a technology called DCI-P3. So in the color science, there's Adobe RGB, but this one supports that format. So it's gonna give you a lot more truer color tones and that's why everything looks so much richer. Additional to that, let me show you the PC connection that this TV set has as well. Now when it comes to PC mode, I'm gonna show you guys first the AU8000 that we have right here. As you can see, it does have its PC button here. If I press okay, it just basically show me the different settings. So right now we're at 1080p at 60, frames per second. And when it comes to the Q60A, it actually has a PC mode. So you can see right here, and watch what happens when I press in the button. You get this new display right here, and basically this allows you to log into your Samsung account and connect it wirelessly to the television sets. So you can see over here, you have your PC mode, Mac mode, 
You can even do the Samsung DeX if you have a Samsung smartphone that's compatible. It shows all your devices. It even have web services. So you can see there's Microsoft 365 and I can go over here and add web services. However, you need to sign into your Samsung account to get access to everything. And this is what it looks like on Adobe. But keep in mind that Q series has that DCI P3. So it's going to look more accurate if you're looking for colors and it's actually doing better than a laptop, which is pretty interesting. Here's what it looks like on Microsoft PowerPoint. And I will tell you that both of them will do a good job, but the Q68 is going to do a great job. So that's everything that you need to know about these two TV sets. And I hope I did it justice enough so you can make the best buying decision for yourself. Now, when I do videos like this, it takes a long time. So please bear with me, but I have a lot of cool things going on in the future. In fact, today I'm filming on a new camera. First time filming on it, have no clue how to use it, but we're getting there. And here's an example of it. The best thing I like about this camera is that once I get all the right lenses, it has autofocus and I think it's a little bit better black levels than the black magics that I've been using. So if you guys want to watch the full videos on this, be sure to go check out the playlist at the end of this video so you guys can continue to learn which TV sets going to work for you. The last thing I want to tell you guys about the one remotes, these are great remote controls. You can hit the one button, do voice commands and get through most of the features. But someone commented the other day about this remote control right here that comes with like the TU7000. Personally, this whole entire video that I did today, I use this remote control. And the main reason why is because this remote control doesn't have Bluetooth. So when you do a video on two of the same TVs, generally when you hit one button, both TV starts responding. So this allows me to get up close and personal with each TV. Plus you have all the diff different direct buttons, like you have the source button and you have down here, the settings button to get to that very fast. These are about 10 bucks. If you're interested, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. If not, the other remote control works great. And finally, I want to thank you guys at the time of this video, we're almost at 100,000 subscribers. So we'll be able to put a YouTube play button back here once we hit that and get it ordered in. So uh, excited about getting that milestone accomplished. But if you have friends that might be interested in this kind of videos, make sure you go and send them over to the channel. Be sure to subscribe like all my videos, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.